I mean, everything I look at says the accel- deceleration of growth that we've got ahead of us or we're in the middle of is pretty scary. Hello, everyone. Raul Pal joins us today to talk about his views on inflation and cryptocurrencies. Being the founder and CEO of Real Vision, he is one of the most knowledgeable people in the industry, and you will get to learn about a lot. Stick around till the end of the video because he's going to make some extraordinary comments on the current situation of financial markets, which could help you stay safe from losses. In the same way that we should have all of our trade linkages there because we don't know how people are going to act in this age, and we could talk a bit about the dollar later. We've got structural problems in the global economy that actually is incentivizing large commodity trading and trading nations to try and separate away from the dollar over time because the dollar is in short supply and too strong. Mm -hmm. So we're bifurcating the world. And so that does bring onshoring and brings building of factories and stuff in the United States or Mexico or Canada or, you know. Raul Powell is implying that this could be the bottom for crypto because if we see the overall macro conditions, Crypto has been outperforming equities and the US dollar. Now this is interesting because it's an indication that the crypto market is ready to boom again, coupled with the fact that most of the excessive leverage has been wiped out with the bankruptcy of major players like Voyager and Celsius. So this is a retail market. So when you take away purchasing power from average people, they invest less in crypto assets. Mm -hmm. So wages didn't go up as much as inflation. So everybody's taken a, you know, a lower income on the chin. So you dollar cost average less. Mm -hmm. So we've seen, you know, the, the number of holders remains high. The network activity remains okay. But the active addresses has fallen through the floor because people have just stopped buying. And it's just because the discretionary income's gone down. And I did not see that because, you know, I've not seen an episode of inflation in a country that's not used to inflation. There's plenty of high inflation countries around the world and they deal with it as normal course of business. I didn't see that. And that was the thing that I missed. With inflation on the rise, it's obvious that people are not spending money to buy crypto assets due to which the overall price action of the crypto space hasn't been too good. However, it should be noted that the number of holders hasn't dropped, which is a good sign, showing that people are holding on to their cryptocurrencies. So there was two factors there. One was the fiscal stimulus, which is giving direct transfer payments. You're stuck at home. You want to play the game. The game happened to be crypto. And we saw it with GameStop and all the other stuff, all the same stuff. Fine. The other side of the equation was the central banks were debasing currency. So the more of currency you print, the lower its purchasing power versus scarce assets. So what we saw was stock markets optically real estate markets optically, crypto markets optically rise significantly. What's interesting is once you divide these by the central bank balance sheet, most of them haven't actually risen. They've been trading sideways. They've just basically offset the debasing of currency. Crypto did because it's a network adoption model. It's different. And NASDAQ did as well because technological advancement is kind of a secular mega trend right now. So part of it is optical. And the other part was pure stimulus going in. Now, the question I always ask is, was that wrong to give the stimulus? I kind of think if you shut down the world, you should pay people for it. Mm -hmm. Now, how they spend it, it's up to them. Raul says that the stimulus relief was a big factor in helping the financial markets remain relatively stable during the lockdown period, with the exception of crypto. We saw Bitcoin reaching new highs because people had the extra money to invest. Clearly, it wasn't sustainable in the long term, and we saw it plummet by more than 75% as soon as inflation rose to 9.1%. I mean, everything I look at says the deceleration of growth that we've got ahead of us or we're in the middle of is pretty scary. According to Rao, we could be in a recession right now. It's frightening to imagine that we could see something like 1974 or the crisis of 2008. He says that all his indicators point toward negative GDP growth and disaster could strike in the near future. So at a personal level, I've been adding the most to crypto I've added since November 2020. So this is not like buying call options. This is, you know, just scaling in as I can because 
the downside risk from here is let's say 30%. The upside is 10x. I'll take a 30 for one bet or whatever, you know, it's the risk reward is now becoming super ludicrous. He has been buying more crypto than ever because the risk to reward ratio is very favorable to ignore. He thinks that the downside risk pales in comparison to the upside potential Bitcoin has at the moment, which is why he has been buying more at every major dip. I don't think there's a better risk reward in the world, but you need to be able to stomach the volatility. So it's like you don't use leverage, you know, the first term and, and stick money in that you are prepared not to need. You know, you don't need it to pay your bills and do all of that stuff. So that's how I'm looking at it. Um, on a macro tactical basis, I've been buying bonds for the reason that we've talked about. I think inflation comes lower and growth comes lower. Mm -hmm. And bonds are the most mispriced currently of all assets versus the business cycle because of this huge narrative, stagflation, the Fed are going to have to go even further and further. And I've seen this playbook many times before, and usually it finishes with a collapse in bond yields. Oil was the shoe that needed to fall, as we talked about earlier. That's now happening. So the last one up is bond yields. Even though he has been adding more to his position, he has not used any leverage. Rao believes that by doing so, the risk becomes far greater, which affects the risk to reward ratio. He then goes on to advise that people should only invest what they can afford to lose. We see more and more people putting their life savings, house payments, car payments into crypto. And when things go sideways, they freak out and panic sell. I was lucky because I first bought Bitcoin in 2013 at 200 bucks. And it went up to a thousand in three months. And I'm like, clearly I'm a god. There's nobody better. There's ah. nobody better. It then fell, but I had a long term macro thesis. So I was looking at a 10 year bet or longer. And I'd done, written the first ever macro strategy piece for Bitcoin and said, listen, on a gold equivalent basis, um, it's worth about a million dollars. So I said, it's trading at 200. This is clearly the best risk reward anybody's ever been given in history. And I said, let's assume I'm an idiot, which I am. Let's discount my million dollar target by 90%. So therefore, the target's 100 grand. Mm -hmm. So there's me being as conservative as possible. Mm -hmm. And it's still at 200. It's still the best risk reward anybody's ever seen in their careers. So I took that bet. It went up 5x. I'm like, see, I'm, I'm a total god, you know. Genius. Then it falls 84%. And I just say well fine you know this is i put the money in i knew it was a call option and it has to have time to adopt and then over time i look back in 2017 and i was up 10x and i stupidly got out too early because of the forking wars i thought i don't know what's going on without really understanding lindy effects and mm -hmm. you know s-curve moments and all of this stuff i got out and then it went up another 10x and i felt like an idiot and then it fell 80 percent again and you know, once you've been through this a few times, you, you get to understand. Rao shares his experience of buying Bitcoin to show how easy it is to misjudge the volatility of this market. It's highly important that investors learn about what they are getting into before throwing any money at it. Do you think we're in a recession right now? How is crypto going to be affected by it? Let us know in the comments. Share this video with your friends and family so they gain knowledge about the markets just like you. See you guys in the next video.